this type of a scenario definitely leads to more opportunity for you in multiple ways in partnering with facilities, no question. They're short staffed, they're on they're uh shorthanded, they can't they don't have staff sending people out in their vehicles, they need transportation providers. Let's go, Brandon, hey. let's go, Brandon, hey. let's go, let's go, hey. let's go, let's go, hey. let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. You know what they say. what the saying means. hating on me for hating that jam then unsubscribe be gone with you it is what it is man it is what it is hello everyone it's joel davis with united medical transportation providers group you are the broker.com and home care access man we got a lot of stuff to go through it man that jam let's go brandon that is my new theme song man that is my new theme song i know it's been a long time uh, thank you one and all, as always, for your great emails. Got some uh, sugar-coated hater emails in there, too. We won't have time to go through those. I'll save those for a later date, but thank you all for your great emails. Always appreciate it. Mario, come on. They forgot about you. Thanks again for the shirt, brother. I'm wearing the other shirt, so thanks again for sending it. Mario, one of my, one of my boys from uh, the great state of Texas. My little Mexicano. Appreciate it, brother. So, we're going to talk about a lot of great topics today, so let's just uh, dive in and see how far we can get with this. I, um, I move some things around to try to hit some different topics because there's just so much. There's just so much. Here's an interesting one I wanted to start with. Um, this is actually, every once in a while, we will have a customer, uh, someone who's not directly involved with NEMT or home care or anything like that, they'll find us the uh, United Medical Transportation Providers Group, and they'll send us an email and inquiry regarding something. Sometimes facilities will contact us, reach out to us, so that's great. This one is interesting. This came in, uh, I think, a couple days ago or something. Uh, it's from this guy, Bill. He says, uh, the rehab center in Compass in blank location refuses to let my father, who was a patient in their facility, travel to a doctor's appointment using one of your members you remember providers because it is not the company they use the company they use has no drivers so they can't get him to his appointment is this legal the reason I'm sharing this with you is in the event any of you are active members encounter uh, a situation like this I mean this is just a kind of a again this is unusual but what a crazy scenario this nursing facility in Compass refuses to let his father go to an, uh, an appointment, a medical appointment, because the transportation provider they typically use, I don't know if they have a contract with him or not, he doesn't, he doesn't say that, uh, they don't have any drivers. Hey, I'm not knocking them because everybody in every business and in every industry, everybody is feeling the labor shortage. The man-made crisis designed to crush you, crush small businesses, crush the... Uh, uh, the middle class, the man-made disaster. 
Um, so everyone's feeling the labor shortage. I get that, but think about it. A nursing facility won't let patients go out because the transportation provider they typically use has no drivers, so they have no business. So therefore, any contract you have before is kind of null and void. Anyways, um, I share this because it's a uni unique and interesting situation that you could easily find yourself in. Dan responded to him and said, good morning, Bill. No, that most certainly is not legal. Even if Encompass has a contract with a particular transportation provider, if that transportation provider is unable to, to render safe and adequate service, then the facility must make every best effort to accommodate the medical needs of the patient. Spot on. Patients have the right to use the transportation provider of choice uh, when needing to go to medical appointments and or other personal outings that are not directly affiliated with the facility with affiliated with facility activities. True. Preventing your father from traveling with the transportation provider of choice is a violation of his rights. True. If necessary, you should make necessary arrangements on your own and ensure your father attends his medical appointments. Should the issue escalate and become a legitimate conflict, be sure to the best of your ability. Uh, everything is documented to include correspondence with facility staff in the event legal action is warranted. Thank you. Best wishes, Dan. Uh, absolutely spot on. Uh, great response. This is a classic example why so many of you, when you guys contact us, why we're always encouraging you to contact us through email and stuff like that so that all of our correspondence is always archived. Hey, it protects you as well as much as, much as it protects us and, and my, uh, my staff. So they, they definitely, that's why I always push them. Hey, do as much correspondence as you can via email. Um, Bill responded, thank you, Dan. Your info is very helpful as I press on in this ridiculous fight I am in. Yeah, no question. That is a... That's a, uh, uh, that's a, that's a crazy, you know what, that is a crazy scenario, another classic example of why to the best of your ability, uh, you want seniors aging, in place. seniors want to age in place, seniors, you know, statistics easily show 90 plus percent of the population of seniors, they want to age in place, they want to stay at home, another reason why you want your parents staying at home, which leads to, here's another, um, Here's another great situation. I say great, tongue in cheek. Um, here's one right here. Let's see if I got it right. Bear with me a second. Okay, this is a little transition here, kind of. Half of nurses said they're thinking of quitting the profession within two years in a survey. Higher pay and better staffing could convince them to stay. About half of U.S. Nurses said they may leave the profession within the next two years in a new survey. 20% said they were either extremely or very likely to leave the profession within two years. In total, 49% said they were at least somewhat likely to leave. Healthcare staff say they're feeling burned out and emotionally exhausted after working during the pandemic, often in difficult working environments. Nurses say they've seen more physical and verbal abuse from agitated patients insiders Alana whatever reported some hospitals are having to limit how many patients they treat because of understaffing that's crazy that is absolutely crazy talk about a man-made disaster here it is if you don't take the magic elixir then half the uh, half your your medical staff is is being discharged under the mandate from the sleepy creepy dementia patient with the cackling sidekick Medusa. I absolutely love it, man. Talk about man-made disasters. Just the incompetence of the Loon Tunes. Man, you gotta love and appreciate dingbatism. Incredible. The logic of the loonies. Some hospitals are having to limit how many patients they treat because of understaffing after we've already kicked out half the people. The CEO of Terra Vista Behavioral Health Center in Massachusetts told Bloomberg earlier in October that nearly a quarter of its beds were empty because of labor shortages. Ha! No connection there. Kicking people out, nurses, doctors, aides, all that stuff because they don't take your magic elixir. 91% of the respondents said they'd be negatively affected by the nurse shortages. Just over half or 52% said they'd had... Uh, they'd had to work more hours or longer shifts, while 40% say they've been given uh, larger patient loads than was feasible. A similar proportion said that the shortage had affected their mental health 
and that they were worried uh, patients weren't getting the right care. Incredible. The Loon Tunes can't connect. A plus B leads to C. One plus two leads to three. Their Loon Tune math, uh, math configurations, one plus two comes to five or something crazy like that. They just can't put it together. It's absolutely crazy. But hey, a couple things. Number one, this type of a scenario definitely leads to more opportunity for you in multiple ways in partnering with facilities, no question. They're short staffed, they're on they're uh shorthanded, they can't they don't have staff sending people out in their vehicles, they need transportation providers. You nurses who are leaving, hey, if you're thinking about starting your own business, it screams home care. This entire article right here screams home care. People want to age in place. They want to stay home. Over 90% of the senior population want to. There's other, plenty of other articles out there where people just can't even find help because, again, everybody has a, the labor crisis, man-made labor, labor crisis designed to kill the middle class, small businesses. It screams home care. Early population wants to age in place. you got nurses right here who are burned out from the hospitals. They were chewed up, spit up. They were used, ground up over the last two years. Now that no one's, everyone's laughing at this nonsense scamdemic and they're all getting discharged because they're not taking the magic elixir. Uh, go start your own business. Go start a home care agency. If you're a nurse, you could dominate. You can absolutely dominate. I could go on and on about that one, man. That is just, it's just the, the craziness of it all. Uh, let's see, got a lot here. Hey Dan, this is great news. Uh, I'm excited to sit down and dig into it. Okay, this was an email regarding a market analysis. Hey Dan, this is great news. I'm excited to sit down and dig into it. Just looking at it, there's no way I could have done such a thorough job. Please tell everyone on the team. I said thank you, thank you again. This hard work will not be in vain. Uh, the reason why I, I left this one in here in the, my queue uh, is because I know there's a lot of you white walkers out there you want all your freebie stuff and you do your drive-by stuff I get that I know there's a lot of people who try to knock off my material and my content and everything um, but just keep in mind be very selective uh, in the type of people and type of services you use um, I know that I mean you literally will have people out there who just to save 20 bucks 40 bucks 50 bucks whatever they will try to use a knockoff um, but they're not playing the long game. People are going to promise you the world. They're going to feed you full of nonsense. It's just the downside of the internet and all this inundated nonsense and get rich quick crap that you can find online. But if people can't do for you the stuff that my staff does, like this market, market analysis are absolutely critical. Market analysis are absolutely critical. As a side note, understand. I always, I'm always prefacing, uh, when I'm talking about market analysis, I'm always prefacing that they take time. They take time because the easy part is doing the research, trying to plot out, map out from your physical location, different hospitals, dialysis centers, nursing homes, rehab, skilled care, assisted, independent living facility, all those types of things. That's the easy part. The hard part is literally picking up the phone and calling because we try to find out the who, the what, the where, the when, and the why. Uh, how big are they? What's their, uh, how many residents they have? What's the basic uh, dimension? Are they heavy private pay, heavy Medicaid? Um, who's in charge? Are they, are, do they provide in-house transportation? Do they outsource? Who are they using? Uh, who's the person we want to contact? So keep in mind, especially with labor shortages, there's literally time, my, my people tell me that literally there's times that they will call facilities and they will, even if they say something simple like, can you please tell me who the administrator is? Sometimes they don't even know. Depending, again, it depends on the size of the facility. Especially if you're in a larger facility, sometimes they don't even know who the administrator is. Or an executive director. Or uh, someone in case management. Or social services department. They don't even know that stuff. So this is why so many times, again, the easy part is uh, mapping out, plotting out your market analysis but the reason why they take so long is you got sometimes you get a call you get a call you get a call sometimes you call leave messages play phone tag and that's the that's the long game that's the hard part so keep those things in mind so a couple things market analysis are very good they take time 
Uh, we do my, my people do the best job they can to get as much detailed and targeted info as they can. Uh, sometimes there's always going to be situations where some people will just feed them crap and they don't know. They can tell you that John Smith is the administrator when it's really Susie Q. Well, we don't know. We just got to go with what they tell us. Um, but there's some people who literally don't even have answers. So we got to wait, call back at a different time, different hour, something like that. So they take time. So keep that in mind. When you white walkers, you think you're just going to find everything for free or you're just going to get some cheap Yahoo out there oh, and they're going to put their, their consulting banner outside their, their house and tell you that they do consulting. Understand, you get what you pay for. Uh, more great questions. Uh, let's see what we got here. Joel, are you currently investing in cryptocurrency? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, still in the market, still, I still got a lot of money in the market, no question. Um, you know, I, I've said it before in previous videos. Uh, the previous four years under the businessman were easily the best years. There's just, you can't argue with numbers. Most of you follow me, you know, I'm a numbers guy. They tell a story. Um, I like patterns, all that stuff. Um, I mean, we crushed it. There's just no other way to put it. We crushed it. You know, in those four years, I made more money in those four years than probably the previous 14 years. I mean, it's crazy. I met with my uh, financial advisor, some of, my, some of them, uh, two, about a week ago. Uh, I mean, if you compare us to last year uh, in 2020, I mean, there were some of our accounts, and I shared, I shared them with you before. Go back and watch some of those videos from last year. I mean, I shared screenshots of my accounts. I mean, we're up in some of them close to 80%, I mean, we're over 70, 72. I mean, if, if we were at 70%, we were down. So anyway, some of these, um, still got a lot of money in the market, no doubt, but uh, I mean, now if, if we're pushing 11%, we're doing well. I mean, things are, so we're definitely moving some things around. We're gonna, um, we're gonna get on the sidelines on certain things and wait for better buying opportunities. Um, things are very dicey, so I mean, look, is making 10, 11%, is that better than a savings account? Of course it is. I mean, come on. There's, there's no, <laughs> I mean, savings accounts are pretty much a negative right now. But uh, so in that regard, hey, Joel, you're, you're making above 10%. That's great. Yeah, I agree with you. But, I mean, it doesn't compare to what it was the previous four years when you're hitting 70s. I mean, it's, we, we cr were crushing it. That's why we did so well. But no question. Uh, for crypto, I'm using Coinbase platform. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward, easy to use. So any of you thinking about it, that's a good platform to leverage, a good entry point to get started. Um, you know, here's what I would tell you, and 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna stress this. I've talked about it, touched upon it in other videos. I know that watching me, watching my videos, watching my content, listen, um, I'm not for everybody. I'm not kissing people's bots. I'm not out there, you know, trying to, there's no get rich quick scheme. Uh, you're not, this isn't going to be a get rich quick. You go down to your post post box there and get your, collect your checks in the mail. It's not going to happen. Um, if you, if you're one of those virtue signaling knee benders, I'm not your flavor. I'm definitely not for you. No doubt. If you're not going to be a worker, I'm not for you. Um, if you if your goal is I want to be the best transportation provider I could be, I, I got to be honest with you. I I have a bigger vision for the people I work with. I have a bigger vision than that. If you want to live and die being the best transportation provider you could be, then go to uh, go to some of those uh, conventions and get your lanyard and and hobnob and talk to. Like get your breakout sessions and talk to the to the to the Medicaid brokers that come to those and they're spot they sponsor them and and jump through all that nonsense. That's not for me. My goal is for you to make money. That's it. Being a transportation provider is a means to an end. Owning a home care agency is a means to an end. Owning your own broker business is a means to an end. Anything else you do, in my opinion is a means to an end. You get into that business, you make as much money as you can, you push it through the system I talked about in those videos. If you haven't watched my videos where I talk about your asset asset uh, protection and cash flow, definitely go back and watch those videos. You can find them at, uh, what is it, Best Million Dollar 
uh, business.com. Go check out those videos. Um, because I want you to literally squeeze out as much money as you possibly can in your transportation business, in your home care, in your broker business, and get your money out of there. Build it, grow it, scale it, make it as profitable as you possibly can, but get your money out of there. Push it through your system. Push it through your consulting companies. Push it through your your own bank, your own bank that you create, that your bank is able, you're able to move money around and lend to other business entities. Get your money out of the actual business. It limits your liability. It spreads out your money, so it limits your exposure to taxation and it allows you to do more things. I want you making and investing money. Make your money work for you. When your money works for you and you make more money outside your business, that's when you're rich. That's when you're not dependent. That's when you're a creator and you're not a chaser. If you're on the front line and every single client, you got chase client, chase client, chase client, you're a chaser and it gets tired and it's wearisome. You want to squeeze out as much juice out of that fruit as you possibly can. Get that money out, push it through your system. Once it's into your system, invest it. Invest the heck out of it. Put it in the markets. Put it in crypto. There's so, there is so much easy money out there. I'm telling you. So that's why I say I'm not for everybody. I get it. I know there's too much male toxicity. I get that. I, I understand if you're a virtue signaling knee bender, I'm not for you. I, I get all that, but my goal is for you to make money. There's so much money to be made, even in this perpetual state of lunacy with the sleepy, creepy dementia patient and the cacti psychic Medusa, the state of insanity, effing insane, which I'm going to prove it to you right now. I'm going to prove it to you right now. Let's take a look at some of this. I love this. This is incredible. Social Security recipients could be hit with a number of changes to their benefits in the future. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen today said the U.S. economy could fall into a recession if the debt ceiling isn't raised before a default on the national debt. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's just constant fear tactics, doom and gloom. Oh, don't get me wrong. Scenarios right now absolutely suck. Absolutely suck. I mean... Gas prices has gone up, food prices has gone up, materials have gone up, uh, inflation is going through the roof. We have all these cargo ships sitting out por uh, uh, off our ports. Again, all man-made disasters to crush small businesses, crush the middle class, man-made labor shortages. Uh, those who do have employees are paying over overly inflated prices. I was in a uh, supermarket the other day going to get some ham and salami and stuff at the deli. Boom. They got, in addition to starting at $16 an hour for someone just slicing up some cold meats, $750 sign-on bonus. Hey, and and, and I, kudos to everybody. I don't want anyone, I want, I want people to make as much money as they possibly can. The problem is this is over inflating the market. It's social engineering. Government creates the problem by social engineering it. Then they further uh, deploy solutions with which further compound the problems. For how long have we been hearing $15 minimum wage, $15 minimum wage? $15 minimum wage isn't practical for small businesses in many areas. But guess what? Right now, some of them are paying $16, $17, almost $20 an hour plus for literally something that probably 10, 11 bucks tops of what it would have been uh, previously. And then people think, oh, we're making more money. Our wages are higher. But how much more are you paying at the fuel pump? How much more are you paying for product? How much more are you paying for food? Again, loon tunes have a disconnect. The motor neurons don't connect. So because they don't connect, they don't understand that one plus two equals three. They still think it's gonna be five. It's incredible. Anyway, Social Security recipients. Look, man, this is to me, this is just insane. If, if you watch my content and you're worried about Social Security benefits, retirement benefits, then, then you missed the boat because my, my goal, my hope, my vision, my plans for you is, hey, man, you're, you're going to be rich, bottom line. Let's continue on a little bit with this article. It's crazy. So what are some of the things that are going to happen? Number one, taxes on benefits could go up. Boom. Boom. Man. 
unbelievable. Social Security benefits, again, so with, with the government, with their social engineering, with they give it the right, they take it with the left. With they give it the left, they take it with the right. So one of the, one of the, uh, one of the issues with uh, Social Security, tax, tax, uh, tax benefits, taxes on the benefits could go up. Increased wages, self-employment earnings, interest, dividends, other taxable income, yada, yada, yada. All man-made nonsense. All could be avoided. Uh, number two, payroll taxes could increase. How does that affect everybody? How does that affect employees? How does that affect you as a, uh, as a business owner? Something like this. This screams broker. This screams broker. You want 1099 contractors. How long have I been saying? Whether you use something like a youarethebroker.com or something else, I don't care. You have got to have some type of revenue in your quiver, in your portfolio, where you have 1099 contractors. You got to find a way to use 1099, 1099 contractors one way or another. Screams contractors. But what do I know? No one ever listens to the fat man. Rising retirement age. Again, if you're worried about retirement age, I mean, then you miss the boat, you, in my opinion. I mean, this is this is for employees. This isn't for you, the business owner. Our goal is to make money, get rich, help people, uh, employ people. Rising retirement age. Congress is still implementing changes to uh, the full retirement uh, age, gradually rising from 65 to 67. I mean... You should long since be retired before then, but it is what it is. It's just the insanity and further social engineering of the Looney Tunes. Hike in cola, cost of living adjustment, latest estimates of 6% to 6.1%. Whoa, talk about a raise, man. An estimate increase from 6 to 6.1. Dude, dude, let's go, Brandon. Let's go branding again if that is your methodology if this is your bottom line i don't ever want you in a position where stuff like that even matters to you stuff like that should never matter to you you should be worried about the markets going up or down and how it affects your investment portfolio how do we get investment portfolio we build our businesses and we squeeze out our our uh, our earnings push it through our system, limit our exposure to taxation, continue to grow and scale, and then sell our business at a multiple. That's how we do it. Oh, man. Let's see what we got here. A couple other things. Just a question. Let's see what this one is about. Just a question. I read on one of your... Um, I read on one of the state sites that if we provide service as a transfer... Okay, I remember this one. Just a question. I read on one of the state sites that if we provide service as a transportation network company, which is identified as a rideshare company that um, provides prearranged and contracted non-emergency medical transports to patients through mobile or online technology, we do not need to have the county certification. We obviously still want it, uh, whatever, we still, we obviously still want it whenever they get to it. But I was thinking of being able to start with offices such as catering to. But I was thinking of being able to start with offices such as plastic surgery offices. As you well know, our state provides plastic surgery to Barbie dolls from all over the U.S. That's true. These surgeons perform these surgeries in their offices and they will not allow their patients, in most cases, to use Uber. They are also contracted with houses uh, that provide the two-week temporary living for these patients and must also be transported from these houses to follow-up appointments. Can you give me insight on this? What do you think about it and how we can move forward with this? Uh, my reply, this was... Um, this was to someone that I'm working with. And I said, uh, we're building a legitimate business with a completely different business model. Consider in the future when you're ready to perform stretcher transports. Let's say you perform one stretcher discharge trip from the hospital. Uh, you take it eight miles down the road. Let's say the whole trip, start to finish, takes 45 to 60 minutes on a high end. 
and you get approximately $200 to $250 depending on the time of day and week. How many app slash rideshare trips would you need to perform? Uh, how many more miles will you need to have driven? How, many, uh, how much more money will you have had to have spent in fuel to get the same ROI? So my basic uh, message to her my basic message to her was she's coming at this saying, hey, uh, my thought process are I'm going to cater to these ambulatory patients, uh, plastic surgery, whatever. I'm going to cater to these ambulatory people. I'm going to use the, um, the mobile apps, be part of these networks, and a couple things I'm going to talk about that too. Um, is that a good business model? Is that, that's the way I could start. Well, your ROI is going to be lower because, again, you're taking low-hanging fruit with the least amount of uh, profitability. Bottom line, least amount of ROI. How many transports do you have to perform? And she's in a state where AMT providers can do stretcher trips. Um, one stretcher trip, how many of those ambulatory patients, how many of those ride share uh, transports would you have to make to equate to just one trip of what you could do if you have one stretch of trip that in her area she could easily get 200 250 depending on the type of day distance all that kind of good stuff how many would she have to do so think about it if it if, if with one or two drivers one vehicle I could do one stretcher trip and get 250 bucks how many more trips do I have to, to perform? Ambulatory trips do I have to perform? How many more? How much? How much more fuel do I have to expend? Especially when gas prices are going up. Uh, how many more people do I have to transport? How much more wear and tear in my vehicle do I have to perform to equate to just one stretcher trip? And we could equate it too to a uh, wheelchair. I mean, wheelchair isn't as much as a stretcher, but it's a lot more than an ambulatory trip. The other thing too is to consider. Um, the reason why they can have different rules for um, uh, insurance, if you're part of these ride share um, services, the reason why they try to make it so that you have different uh, types of insurance is that it's so it's easily accessible. Do you think that uh, do you think that those tech companies don't have power and influence over some of the local legislation that's being passed regarding insurance requirements? Of course they do. Um, but again, this is not your target market. If you want to be an Uber driver and go crush your vehicle, you're never going to be able to grow in scale. Let's just, we got to start the conversation there. You're never going to be able to grow in scale. So if you want to go crush your POV, your personal vehicle, then go do that. Our goal is to grow something that we can literally grow in scale, sell at a future multiple, squeeze out our profits, squeeze out our margins, push it through our system, and invest, become creators not chaser so to keep things in perspective do i want to be an uber driver and how many or an app driver ride share whatever they are do i want to do that stuff or how about when people contact us and they they don't even go down that road of actually mentioning ride share but all they want to do is perform ambulatory trips for um for brokers if that's the case if that's the case you want to do that then build your own network where you bring on drivers and you use them as 1099 contractors and let them go service the low hanging fruit and you just slice off some margin on the top of it for yourself. You focus on the actual wheelchair and stretcher transports. But again, I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, which one am I at here? Um... Let's go, Brandon. I really have to say thank you for doing this research with me. It's crazy, and I see why people just quit and buy something stupid. Okay, this we're now we're talking about vehicles. When I'm working with you one on one, I mean every single day I'm looking at vehicles, all over the place, um, and we got different, especially based upon your needs, based upon what we got. Um, every state has different rules and regs. Number one, everyone has a different budget. Um, so we have different specs, um, but I'm constantly looking for vehicles. So if I'm working with you one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to work to find the best possible deal we can. This is from a client provider who says, I really have to say thank you for doing this search with me. It's crazy, and I see why people just quit and buy something stupid. These people have vehicles listed that are sold, that are already sold. What a waste of time and how stupid. Yes, that was me venting. Yeah, that's true. Um, 
yeah, bottom line. I mean, looking for, for the right types of vehicles, it could be a pain in the butt, but I mean, we're literally doing it every single day, so we're happy to work with you. Um, so, thank you for contacting us. Can you please, okay, so this is an email. I don't see the question from the person, but this is an email that, um, I don't know if this is Don or Dan are responding. Um, regardless, our response from my team member to them, and again, I don't see their question, but their response is, thank you for contacting us. Can you please clarify what account you are referring to that you need help with? Are you referring to UMTBG, Dispatching Made Easy, Fetch Mazo? Okay, so first and foremost, if you do contact us with something, understand we have multiple types of accounts, subscriptions, software, systems, things like that, so please be specific. If you are referring to DME, we have many, many users who use our system while still performing broker trips, but DME does not integrate with any brokers, uh, Medicaid brokers, or their respective platforms for many reasons. Yes, that's true, we don't. DME, we, over the years, we've been solicited so many times over the years to uh, make DME more compatible with the infrastructure methodologies of these brokers. We specifically will not do it for multiple reasons. Um, first and foremost, they're gonna change all the time and I'm not gonna keep chasing it. I'm not gonna keep spending money to chase it to stay up to date with that. The other reason is we wanna protect our people. So, whether this was Dan, Charlie, or Don, they said, first, we don't allow integration so that we protect and preserve our users. That's true. Those platforms that integrate with brokers, Medicaid brokers, grant the brokers access to your accounts. That's true. That's in the fine print. So if you're using one of these other um, dispatching services, you're granting them the authority to share your info and your content with that broker. So if they're using uh, Logisticrap um, or Movid Care, MTM, whatever, then they can, they can basically access your account. Um, in short, they can spy on you, true. See what you are doing, what routes you are taking, and dock you at their discretion, that's true. They, if you're quoting them on a price or um, they disagree with the route you took, they could clearly dock you and say, we're not gonna pay all that, even though they agreed to it previously. So in short, they can spy on you, see what you're doing, what routes you are taking, and dock you at their discretion. If you are doing something, they don't approve, that's true. Further, they can see all aspects of your business, which is true. So they can see well beyond if someone is at, think about it. If Logistic Care is accessing your account, if MTM, uh, you know, First Transit, whoever, if they're accessing your the platform and they can see your account, um, they can obviously, if there's, depending on how it's structured, I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar enough with all these platforms, but technically they could see other work you do outside Medicaid brokers. Um, further, they can see all aspects of your business, where else you serve, who you serve, and more. Needless to say, this is not an option for dispatching made easy. That's true. Not going to happen. Second, brokers are all different, are set up differently in different states. That's true. And convey trips differently. That's true. Some people are still using faxes. I'm, I'm absolutely baffled by that. That's why I've met, a lot of these Medicaid brokers, even like someone like Logisticrat, they're, they're, um, they're, they're incorporated differently in different states. So they're incorporated differently in different states. Um, they operate differently. So there's in some states they have different types of like managed care, um, managed care organizations. So they can operate one way for one managed care, have slightly different policies, rules, and regulations to comply with this other managed care organization. So in some places, we, some people are still conveying trips back and forth by uh, fax. It's absolutely incredible. They, it's like, they've, as a minimum, as a minimum, just use email. I mean, if you don't have your own internal portal, that's fine, but at least use email. But some people are still using fax. I'll never get it. Let's see where I was. Uh, let's see, second, brokers are all different, all set up differently in different states and convey trips differently. If we were committed to catering to the brokers whenever they make a change we would need to make a change yes that's true it is a reactionary strategy absolutely 100 percent that we simply do not have the desire to deal with absolutely true i'm not 
we're not going to waste our time or effort if uh, um, the reason we no longer upload uh, through dispatching made easy where we don't have a quick easy upload process is because if we do have a quick and easy upload process then it's like a key you put a key into a key lock all those teeth have to line up perfectly if one of those grooves changes then it's not going to work the same thing happens if if logistic crap was to just change one little thing on their upload process well then we'd have to modify on our end we're not going to do that um Let's see, which leads to this third point. Uh, third, integrating with brokers would definitely push the cost of DME beyond $97 per month. Needless to say, that is not an option. Joel is committed to keeping DME at $97 per month, regardless of your number of users, trips, vehicles, etc. Absolutely right. I mean, DME always has been. For as long as I, I'm affiliated with it, it's going to be $97, regardless of the number of uh, trips you perform, drivers, users, customers, whatever. I want you knowing exactly what you got. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Before I go into all that, let me. I just want to. Bottom line, <clears throat> some of you have again. You guys are awesome. You send some great emails, and I know, I know that so many of you are frustrated right now. So many different reasons with, uh, you know are basically our modern day fall of Saigon or Rome is burning. Rome is burning and the people who set ablaze are clueless and have no idea. Absolutely no idea. But my advice to you, and I've been saying it for a long time while we've been uh, under this uh, dictatorship, under this current dictatorship, I've, I've been telling you the only way to get through this, you've got to push through this is to grow your way through this. And again, that's why I'm not telling you, hey, go start a medical transportation business, go start a home care, go start a broker business. I, again, I always, as a true fat man, I just use the analogy of a buffet. I'm just putting out all the food in front of you. You go choose what you want. You go choose what's best for you. You go choose the best formula for you. I want to present people with options. now. Then when you contact us and you want direct help, by all means, we're going to help you. You need help with NEMT, we're here for you. You need help with home care, that's great. Home care access, home care access doing great. I mean, we have people who are working one-on-one -on -one with Marty and Ginny right now. Um, let's see, we're, we're what, coming up on November pretty quick here at the end of November. I mean, how much more? This is, again, this is why I've said I'm the absolute worst online marketer, social media guru, and everything. I mean, I almost volunteer and encourage people to unsubscribe. But um, my goal is to try to get everyone to like me. So you either see it or you don't. You see the opportunity, you don't. Uh, you know, a lot of people, when they're doing all their, their uh, slick online marketing, while supplies last 72 hours, 24 hours left, three through only three are left. They, they try to develop that scarcity. I mean, we gave people a 120 day notice for the discount on home care access. How much more of a terrible online marketer could I possibly be? There is no scarcity. Uh, the only degree of scarcity with home care access right now is time and availability in terms of doing one on one coaching with you because, again, take someone like Ginny and Marty. I mean, they're literally. Uh, still running their own home care agency after 20 plus years. So they're literally still operating their home care agency as well as helping different people around the country now with home care access. They're literally holding people's hands and helping them, doing the application process, cultivation, a lot of the research because things are different in every single state. So you got to keep that in mind. But I mean, how, how, much, how much more of a terrible online marketer could I be when I'm telling people, we're giving you a $500 discount for 120 days. That's how bad it is. But regardless, my point is, my point is, you absolutely need to grow your way through this calamity. I do believe, absolutely, we are definitely in the storm. The storm is upon us. I've mentioned that in multiple videos. The storm is definitely upon us, but we, uh, we will get through the other side. Uh, this lunacy is not going to last forever with the uh, the sleepy creepy dementia patient with the cackling sidekick Medusa. 
things are going to get crazier in the short term. They're going to definitely heat up. There's definitely going to be more pain. But on the other side of that pain is going to be healing. For those of you, let's go Brandon, for those of you who are in the know and you're wondering about my bet, which I call an investment, it's at five million right now, five million. And I'm so close, I'm like at 90% to get them to six million. So I'm gonna, if everything lines up, I just need a little bit more time. We're going after six million, so let's go Brandon. It's gonna be, it's already at five million, that's locked in, that's locked in. But I'm trying to get it to six million, so let's go Brandon. So, my peeps, I'm going to uh, end this here so I can go take care of some other things. I know that I am I'm the, the world's worst online social media guru. I'm the absolute worst at staying up to date with videos. I know that so many of you uh, have asked about, Joel, why don't you start a podcast? That is a regularity that, is, that I just can't commit to just because of time. Just because of time. I mean, I still got my broker business. I still work with all these different people. I'm involved in so many different uh, uh, business interests. I just gotta, I gotta play it smart. I gotta be very, I have to be very, very, very cautious of how and where I allocate my time. Bottom line, and you gotta do the same thing. Time is money. Time is money for sure. We've all heard it, but man, if it isn't true, God comes first, then your spouse, then your kids, then your business. It just so happens that your business funds everything. Um, so you got to invest the adequate time into your business without neglecting God, your spouse, and your family. Find that balance, man, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. But that's also why, like, my kids are going to be homeschooled. They're homeschooled so they can travel with me and do things and all that kind of stuff to the best of my ability. I try to take my family when I do certain things. Um, definitely got some trips coming up um, that are both business and pleasure. Hey. You got to kill as many birds as a single stone as you can. So I like to take them with me, travel with me on, on long trips, homeschool, all that kind of good stuff. That's the way to go, especially because you can't be having your kids in these public schools today, man. They are loon tune fast. Cannot do it. So anyways, I know I'm rambling, so I'm going to cut this off here. Uh, if you stayed all the way till now to the very end, you're true blue. You're loyal. I appreciate it. I love you. Um, stay tuned. I'll have a lot more coming. Feel free to continue to send us your emails. I always appreciate it. Stay in touch. When you do, I'll see you at the top.